Hi, everybody. Welcome to English Digest. I'm Stephanie, and I'm Tom. It's our TOEIC unit day two. How you doing on those words? We've got some good words in today's program as well to help you when you finally have to sit down and take that TOEIC test. Ah, we know that you guys are studying hard out there. We're going to try to help you by going through and defining some of these terms, and maybe giving you some other ways you can use these words or、um, I don't know similar words. They're called synonyms, words that have similar meanings. Antonyms, words that have the opposite meaning. Sometimes that's helpful to study both at the same time. Anyway, we've been talking about what a visiting artist program's all about, especially at a Department of Fine Arts. And here we're talking about a department、uh, who focuses mainly, I think, on the visual arts. For example,、uh, painters, sculptors,、uh, things like that. Instead of maybe、um, you know the movement arts like dance or Theater, singing, things like that. So we've made up a place called AMC University,、mm -hmm. and we're going to be going through today's article, reading that first, and then we'll be back to kind of break down some of these terms and phrases for you. AMC University is proud to announce the first participants in the visiting artist program. Students of any discipline are encouraged to participate in this eye-opening series, comprised of lectures and workshops from artists doing seminal work in their field. June fifteenth to sixteenth, Nyla Bishop. Nyla Bishop, a graduate of the Art Institute of Seattle, has been dubbed the contemporary Caravaggio among fans of her work. Showcasing the same oil painting techniques and dramatic juxtapositions of light and dark as the old master, she uses her skill to render thoroughly modern subjects. Among her more notable paintings are "Girl with Selfie Stick" and "Man in Beard, Bun, and Flannel." The subjects of Bishop's work reflect both an embrace of post 2000s culture and a critique of its vanities. Bishop's work has been featured at the Taipei Biennial, 2019, and in a solo exhibition at the Tate Modern in London, among many others. June 26 to 27th, Ivan Choi, known for his dreamlike and surreal narrative photographs, Ivan Choi will bring his keen eye to campus for both a lecture and live photography session. Having grown up as a first-generation Korean American. Choi draws equally from Eastern and Western cultures, marrying them beautifully in his scenes. Works such as David and Gumiho and Ophelia are themed around mythology, while At a Glance and Stellar portray cross-cultural subjects in a dazzling light. Choi has exhibited in spaces like the Guggenheim Museum in New York City and the PKM Gallery in Seoul. Okay, guys, let's get started. We're going to look at the title first: AMC University's inaugural visiting artists. So they have enough money to actually invite two artists to come to their university for probably a semester. Inaugural means the first time. So this is uh, uh, the first time they've done this. The visiting artists who have come. So they're proud to announce the first participants in the visiting artist program. Remember, in our previous program, we talked about how they had gotten some money from a generous philanthropist who had donated a quite a large sum to their department, which allowed them to put this、uh, program together. So this is kind of exciting for the whole school that they have visiting artists on campus. So we're going to start in in the first paragraph. It says、uh, they're proud to announce the first. Participants in the visiting artist program, students of any discipline are encouraged to participate in this eye-opening series, comprised of lectures and workshops from artists doing seminal work in their field. These are typical words you'll see in announcements, especially at a university of this sort. When you talk about someone's discipline.
You're not talking about how well they work. You know, if someone has a lot of discipline, they're able to control what they do and they get a lot done. They're hard workers. But here, your discipline here refers to what you're studying in school, what your major is, what your field of study is, or your discipline. So,、uh, don't get confused when you hear this used in this way. Students of any discipline, meaning, could be students studying、uh, painting. They could be students in the graphic. Design、uh, discipline. There are lots of different areas of study at school, as you know. Yes, within the fine arts. Okay, you would not be talking about engineering students or mathematics students. That would be a totally different department. These are disciplines within the fine arts departments, like you said, painting, music,、uh, theater, stuff、mm-hmm. like that. So yes, people in different departments, or excuse me, different disciplines, are encouraged to participate. It's an eye-opening series. You'll learn a lot of new things. It is. Comprised of, or it is made up of lectures and workshops from these artists doing seminal work in their field. Seminal means very influential, and it's going to have a big impact in the future. So yes, indeed, this is something that、uh, everyone should participate in. Now, the first workshop they've got here, the first program here, the first visiting artist is Nyla Bishop, who is coming for two days in June, June fifteenth to sixteenth. And this section、uh, introduces us to Nyla Bishop. Okay,、mm-hmm. Nyla Bishop, a graduate of the Art Institute of Seattle, has been dubbed the contemporary Caravaggio among fans of her work.、Uh, Caravaggio, I believe, is an old Italian painter,、uh, not the sculptor Michelangelo. I think Caravaggio's name is、uh, Michelangelo, but it's not the same person. This is a painter here, Caravaggio. So you could look at his. Art, and we could compare his art with Nyla Bishop's art, and people say, "Hmm, yes, she's kind of like the the modern Caravaggio, the contemporary one. Contemporary just means、uh, recent, modern, etc. That's、uh, how she is described by her fans." Right. I wanted to mention this word "institute," guys. It's、uh, a word we use to talk about an organization that has a particular purpose. You'll often see.、Uh, Schools that have special departments that are called institutes: the Art Institute, Rochester Institute of Music. There are lots of different music schools that use this actually in their title, rather than saying the art school or the art、uh, university. The Art Institute. It's smaller than a university, so it's an institute of Seattle. If you dub something, that's kind of your nickname. It's not a real name; it's a nickname. We dub a lot of things with nicknames throughout our lives, so it's kind of fun. So she's dubbed the contemporary Caravaggio, as Tom explained. She has a similar style to this guy, although she lives in a different era. You could say now they're showcasing the same oil painting techniques and dramatic juxtapositions of light and dark as the old master, and she uses her skill to render thoroughly modern subjects. So that's why they're similar. They both showcase the same oil painting techniques. If you're showcasing something, you're kind of showing it off, guys. You can actually say, "We're going to have a showcase Friday night where everybody is invited to come." I'm, you know, maybe you have a showcase of people who are singing some songs from Broadway shows.、Uh, we used to do these when I lived in New York. We'd have a showcase on Friday night, and we'd invite. Uh, agents to come and hear us, so we could get a talent agent. But if you showcase using this word as a verb, it means you're showing something off, so people can see its、um, attributes and the best parts of it. You don't want to showcase things you're bad at. You want to showcase things that you're proud of. So they're showcasing the same oil painting techniques. And what's this dramatic juxtaposition of light and dark? Here, Juxtaposition、Tom. basically means you're、uh, arranging things in the picture.、Mm. It's uh, like uh, the difference between light and dark, and contrast, and things like that. It's similar to composition, although it focuses on what is next to what else in the picture. So yes, you've got light things next to dark things. I guess that's how Caravaggio painted. So she does show some of those techniques and juxtapositions and compositions. 
of the old master Caravaggio, but she still uses her skill to render thoroughly modern subjects. So yes, indeed, of course, Caravaggio painted many centuries ago. She's painting modern subjects, maybe like people taking selfies of themselves, like you know, it says here in a couple seconds here, or other things you would see nowadays that you did not see way back then. So she renders these subjects、uh, in her paintings. To render just means to show it or to convey that image.、Uh, that's what artists do. They render their pictures using paintings. They basically show us those things in their own unique way, and they're completely, one hundred percent, thoroughly modern subjects. I wanted to mention with render here, you'll often see it、uh, if you get a bill for、um, from a company that、uh, has done some work for you. It will say.、Um, You know, an amount that you owe them for services rendered, or services they've given. So, render simply means provide or give a service or some help. You can also、uh, talk about someone rendering assistance or giving assistance to someone. So, don't be confused with this word. It just means to give or provide something. You also will see it if you're talking about art. When you see a drawing, especially, you'll talk about someone's rendering of a landscape or rendering of a particular,、um, uh, some famous、uh, maybe a portrait, maybe. Seascape, or yeah, there, there are a lot of renderings. If you go to Paris and you see lots of artists on the sidewalk, you can buy or purchase their renderings of famous scenes. So you'll see it like that too. But here just means simply to provide or give. Now she's got some notable paintings,、uh, such as "Girl with Selfie Stick," <laughs> which is really modern.、Mm. I hate selfie sticks. Don't annoy people with those, you guys.、Uh, man in beard, bun, and flannel. Sounds like a, a typical guy.、Um, this was popular just, I would say, even a year or two ago, where a guy would take his hair and put it in a bun on top of his head. I didn't find it attractive, but there were a lot of guys doing it. I wouldn't do that. It looks stupid <laughs> to me. And of course, I guess、uh, millennial men like to have beards too.、Mm-hmm. And I guess they like to wear flannel, which is kind of a soft cotton shirt with、uh, sort of patterns on it, maybe、uh, black and red checker or something、yeah. like that, or maybe a Scottish tartan or something like that. Those would be flannel shirts. You don't see them around here in Taiwan too much. I guess it's too hot for that. But those. Those are some examples of her notable works, and the subjects of Bishop's work <laughs> reflect both an embrace of post two thousands culture and a critique of its vanities. So we're talking about the subjects of her work. You know the things that are in the、uh, paintings here. They both reflect the embrace of post two thousands culture. And a critique of its vanities. So they reflect this. You can see these things in her paintings. Reflections are what you get from a mirror. So if you look in the paintings, you can get this idea. First of all, she's embracing post two thousands culture. To embrace means you like something, you want to give it a big hug. So she has some sort of respect for it. Post two thousands culture, but also. Uh, they reflect a critique、mm. of its vanities. So at the same time, she is offering a critique, or you could say a criticism.、Uh, she's saying something negative about these vanities. If someone says,、um, you know, you have a lot of vanity, it just means you spend a lot of time worrying about your appearance, which、mm. isn't a compliment, by the way. It says her work has been featured or shown. Displayed, you could say, at the Taipei Biennial 2019, and in a solo exhibition, meaning only her work was shown or displayed at the Tate Modern in London, among many others. This word biennial just means、uh, something that happens every other year. So if it was 2019, it won't happen again until 2021.、Um, so she's uh, had uh, some success, it looks like for sure. Absolutely, and now we're going to talk about Ivan Choi. So here he's going to be here from June 26 to the 27th later in the month.、Mm. Known for his dreamlike and surreal narrative photographs, Ivan Choi will bring his keen eye to campus for both a lecture. 
and live photography session. Okay, so we can tell from this that Ivan Choi is a photographer, not a painter,、mm. not a sculptor. He uses his camera to create art. So he's known for or famous for his dreamlike photographs and his surreal narrative photographs. So dreamlike, like dreams. They're surreal. Surreal is sort of like dreams. You get kind of weird images that you don't see every day. Little bizarre looking, kind of, kind like, of like fantasy. Exactly surreal. Like、uh, I guess Harry Potter is kind of a surreal、uh, book series. And they're narrative photographs. Narrative means you're basically trying to tell a story. Right. So he will bring his keen or very sharp eye to campus for both a lecture and live photography session. Now that would be fun for the students there because they could actually get some tips from him during that live photography session. He grew up as a first-generation Korean American, meaning his parents came to America or moved to America. They were immigrants, and then he was born in America and raised there. So he's first-generation Korean American, and he mixes his Eastern and Western cultures together, which we see a lot these days, and marries them beautifully in his scenes. You'll often see this phrase、uh, to marry something, or they marry beautifully, or they marry well together.、It、just means when you put them together, they really suit each other. They look great together. So he's got works.、Uh, how did you say this, Tom? David and Gumiho. Gumiho.、Uh, Gumiho. I was guessing.、Uh, I don't speak Korean. Please forgive me, my, Sorry, our、guys. fellow Koreans out there have、yeah. never really studied Korean before. Although it is a fascinating culture and language, I love your writing system. But in any case, here, yes, this is the title. Or these are some titles of his works here: David and Gumiho and Ophelia, which of course was a figure from Shakespeare. I think she was a Hamlet's girlfriend, and、uh, she felt betrayed by him. He denied his love for her, so she ended up drowning in a river.、Uh, maybe that's what、uh, is depicted in the photograph. We、mm. don't quite know, but、uh, these works are themed around mythology, which means you know ancient stories from different cultures, like Greek mythology. Of course, involves all the gods like Zeus and. And Hera and stuff like that, while at a glance and stellar portray cross-cultural subjects in a dazzling light. So these are the titles of some other works here, and they portray or they depict these cross-cultural subjects. Kind of a mixture of those two cultures, probably、cool. American culture and Korean culture,、mm -hmm. but they are presented in a dazzling light. So if you look at them, they're going to be bright, they're going to be cheery, they're going to really dazzle or surprise. And he has exhibited in spaces like the Guggenheim Museum in New York City, and the PKM Gallery in Seoul. The Guggenheim Museum is real, and it is located in New York City. So I'm going to assume the PKM Gallery is real too.、Um, if you get a chance and you're in Seoul, Korea, you might want to check out the PKM Gallery. Right now, guys, we are going to take a short break. Listen to our Chinese teacher, and then we'll be back to look at a couple of these discussion questions. Stay tuned. Hi, everyone. My name is Jenny. We're going to continue to talk about one more book, "Art Teacher." 仿效。那如果说有一个驻校的艺术家，当然可以进行各种的活动。而这篇的内容里头，当然就有两位在延续上一篇对话中的两位艺术家，他们会有哪些活动？提醒大家的是，这两位艺术家都是文章里虚构的，绝对不是真实的艺术家。虽然它里面有提到他的作品，他在哪里展出，哎，这些都不要当真哦。我们纯粹是拿来作为学英文用的脚本。好，我们来看看这个地方。说到了这个大学，这当然也是虚构的大学。好，这个大学里头，它现在就要有一个仿效计划，而且我们也说了，他们有邀请两位艺术家到学校来。那学生们呢，当然都希望他们能来来参加这个。Eye-opening series. This eye-opening series is let you wow, open your eyes, let you wow, open your eyes. Um, you can see different things. But be careful that in this eye-opening series, the comprised of, we know comprised. If we use the past tense, of course, this phrase originally means A. 
is comprised of blah blah blah. 也就是是由什么组合而成的。我们常见到的当然不一定是 comprised。当你要用 A 是由什么组合而成，另外一个片语可能更常用的是 be composed of。好，那在这里它。没有 be 动词，因为它只保留了这个过去分词。嗯，用分词来当修饰语，引导出一个偏语来当修饰语，这样子当然就让句构更简化了。所以记得这里是一个 P P 过去分词，由什么组合而成？好，有 lectures， 然后有 workshops。换句话说，它其实有演讲，有研讨会。那嗯，我们来看看下面就提到了，哎，会有哪些时段，什么样的活动？那第一位艺术家提到了是 Nyla。好，在这一段期间，六月十五到十六之间，我们先来介绍他是谁。好，第一位 Bishop， 他是艺术学院的毕业生。那其实他有很多的粉丝。他被称为是现代的卡拉瓦乔。如果对艺术有兴趣的话，可能可以去探究一下卡拉瓦乔是什么样的画家。不过这边就说了，他的油画技巧也好 ，Bishop 他的戏剧性的光影并置这样子的技巧是。来自于卡拉瓦乔的引发跟启迪，那他用他的技巧来表达，完全是现代的主题哦，而不是像嗯卡拉瓦乔一样，他的主题当然有所不同。好，这边我们要提到的是句构上面，嗯 ，showcasing the same oil painting techniques， 说到 Bishop， 他展现出来的技巧。跟卡拉瓦乔是一样的。那这个 showcase 本来我们动词就是展现，用 ing 当然你就是用它的现在分词。换句话说，这里呢也是一个分词的形态。嗯，那真正的主词就是后面。主要句的 she she uses her skill to render thoroughly modern subjects. 好，前面这些分词构句稍加留意。再来，下面就看到另外一个重要的句构了。这边用 among her more notable paintings are blah blah blah。好，在 be 动词后面，其实就是它的作品名称，而这两个作品名称才是这句话真正的主词。所以看出来了吗 ？Among 这个地方。介系词引导出来的片语，其实放到前面来，本来它应该放在 be 动词后面的，而 be 动词后面这里写的这两个作品名，反而本来应该在句首作为主词用。不过，因为这里我们要把焦点移到后面作品名，就形成了倒装句。好。在我们讲倒装句里面有很多种倒装，其中的一种倒装就是像这种，哎，介系词片语是地方副词，或者是说你有 be 动词后面当补语的主词补语都可以搬到前面，然后形成倒装句。好了，接下来下面呢再提另外一位，哎，这位仿效的艺术家，他是。Ivan，Ivan Ivan 呢？嗯，他的身份是什么？他基本上是以超写实的叙述照片这样子的作品而闻名。So no one for 注意到了 ，no one 本来的片语说一个人以什么而闻名 ，a person is known for 加他特点。特色，那这个地方 no one for 就是这样来的。当然，主词不要了 ，be 动词不要了，你用过去分词来引导，这样就是一个分词构句的句型。那提到他呀，嗯，他呃，在校园里面他会有一些演讲，会有摄影课程，而他本人也是第一代的韩裔美国人。好了，我们看到 first generation Korean American。嗯，韩裔美国人，而他怎么找到他的灵感呢？他说的哈，灵感是来自于，所以注意到 draw from 是来自于东方的跟西方两者，而再来最后就说到他的作品哪些，嗯，知道吗？这些作品名后面
are themed around mythology. 是围绕在神话这个主题 Theme 平常当名词用，这里当动词 Theme 本来当动词就可以表示给什么主题，以什么做主题，所以 are themed around blah blah blah. Okay, 我们今天讲解就到这边结束，我们下次见。We're going to take a quick break. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Okay, everybody. It's time for us to have some discussion questions、okay. here.、Uh, they're all about the world of art.、Cool. So here's the first question: Who is your favorite visual artist? Describe their work. What do you like most about it? Okay, I will tell you about the artist. I had a couple of his paintings up on my walls when I was in college. His name is Pierre. Auguste Renoir, and he's an impressionist.、Um, I loved his painting,、um, especially one that had these colors in it that I just loved. It was—it's、um, a very famous painting. Let me find the name of it, and maybe you can look it up. It's Bal du Moulin de la Galette,、um, and it's just—it's one of my favorite, favorite paintings. There's a lot of stripes in it.、Um, it's a group of men and women in the park. In Paris, and they look like they're happy. They have money. They're not working. I love the straw hats that the men have, but in particular, I love the dresses because they're striped, and I love stripes. He was one of my favorite, and also Degas,、uh, a little later period, but he was also kind of impressionist. He called himself a realist. Loved his because he painted ballet dancers. Okay, fair enough. And、uh, for、you? me, yeah, to answer this question is kind of difficult because you know I like some paintings by one artist、mm -hmm. and some by another artist. But I guess if I had to say one particular person, I guess I'd say Paul Cezanne.、Mm -hmm. I like his use of color,、uh, which、uh, is both surreal and、Vivid. realistic at the same time. It looks、yeah. like a real scene, but at the same time, it looks like he added colors randomly or something like、uh -huh. that. Especially that painting of the two guys playing cards. That's that really cool. But I also like some paintings by Picasso. I even like some stuff by、uh, the famous Mexican illustrator Miguel Covarrubias,、oh. among other people. But uh, indeed, uh, yeah, for me it's kind of hard to answer this question. But、uh, yes, indeed, I like them because、uh, they're both—they're basically all kind of surreal. They look real, but at the same time, they're creative. Why draw things to make them look exactly like reality when you can actually play with it a little bit? That's、yeah. what I like. Yeah. Why not? Otherwise, you're kind of taking a photograph.、Sure. Okay, Tom. Let me ask you this: If you could attend a lecture by anyone,、um, either living or dead, who would you most? Want to learn from? What a question! Gee, that is a difficult question. I suppose I'd like to hear a lecture by anybody.、Uh, I suppose you know I've never really heard the voice of、uh, Einstein. You know, Albert Einstein.、Yeah. Even though I'm not really good at math or physics, but I understand、uh, he was、uh, interesting in a lot of different areas as well. So if you could hear him talk, yes, about physics, about、uh, the theory of relativity, that's that's fine. But I'm sure he could talk about other stuff as well. Uh, how about you? For me, I would,、um, if it wasn't someone I I knew personally, like in my family, it would be Abraham Lincoln or George Washington. I think they were both great guys, great men, who had wonderful qualities, who are heroes. But honestly, if I could pick someone, I would pick my dad's mother, my grandmother. I never met her; she died when my dad was fifteen. And I've been told we're similar. I would just love to sit down and talk with her, ask her some questions. <laughs> so anyway. Anyway, who would you like to、um, listen to,、uh, either living or dead? These are great discussion questions. We hope you have a good time using these in your discussion in class, or maybe you were studying these lessons on your own. Go ahead and give it a shot. Describe、uh, your favorite artists, things like that. What you like most about them, and that lecture you'd most like to listen to. Right now, we gotta wrap this up because we're running out of time. We're glad you joined us. We hope you'll join us again next time for English Digest. I'm Stephanie, and I'm Tom. Goodbye. Bye.